Welcome to the We Are PPS podcast, where we sit down with the staff, students, and community partners working to make Pittsburgh Public Schools one of America's premier school districts, student-focused, well-managed, and innovative. I'm your host, Ebony Pugh, and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Lisa Augustine, the district's Director of Charter Accountability. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Ebony. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so. Charter school is a topic that creates a little bit of confusion and it's a very sensitive topic to a lot of people. Can you explain what charter schools are? So charter schools are public schools. The difference is they're allowed some autonomy to try new things and to be, they're actually expected by law to be innovative and to serve as models for district. They were meant to kind of be as a lab for trying new things in education that districts could possibly implement on a larger scale but they are absolutely public schools and they're their own LEAs. So um, that term LEA makes me think of, as the district spokesperson, oftentimes I'll get calls around incidents that might occur at charter schools and I have to explain that they do not fall with, under the Pittsburgh public schools. Can you explain the governance of charter schools and what the, what is the term LEA? Sure, so uh, district, uh, charter schools have their own board of directors so districts in pennsylvania are the authorizers for charter schools so that just means that we're the ones who review applications and decide whether or not a charter school can open and when a charter school opens then we are responsible for the oversight so there's a charter school law that is very specific about what is to be monitored and watched by the authorizers and what charter schools are held accountable for and as the authorizer for a charter school we have that responsibility for ensuring that the charter school is doing what they promised they would do in their application and that they're meeting the needs of students. However, we don't run charter schools. We don't get to tell them what to do. We don't get to dictate their daily operations. So if they have uh, specific rules around the dress code or discipline, we don't get to step in and say they can't do that. They don't have to follow Pittsburgh Public policies and processes they have their own autonomy just like pittsburgh public schools as a district has our has their own autonomy and we don't have to follow other districts across the state so if when you get those calls unfortunately most of the time they have to deal with the leadership at the charter school and they can go to the board just like our parents come to our board Thank you. That's a um, really good ex explanation of that. How many charter schools are within the city of Pittsburgh and how are they funded? So we have 12 that we charter uh, and they are funded by us. <laughs> so uh, the charter schools receive a per pupil subsidy. They get a per pupil subsidy based on general education and then a different subsidy, which is uh, much higher than the general ed for special education students and that comes out of our budget. And um, do charter schools serve all students? Charter schools serve all students. As a public school, they are required to serve all students. So as the district's director of charter accountability, um, what do you do and why is it important for the district to have a department dedicated to charter schools? So I serve as the district's representative for, uh, as the authorizer for the charter schools. So I'm responsible for the oversight, which includes annual reviews and site visits, renewals, amendment requests, um, reviewing applications, and just on a daily basis, ensuring that charter schools are living up to their promise and are following the law and are also meeting the terms of the charter agreement that they have with the school district of Pittsburgh. So I, I ensure that there aren't any violations. Uh, I often also get those, those calls um, from, from parents um, with different complaints. And depending on what it is, I can step in and ensure that the charter school lives up to, to the, their, their promise and also lives up to meeting the law. It is important that we have this office in the district because with 12, 12 charter schools doesn't sound like a lot, but for a district our size, that's, that's actually quite a number of charter schools for one person to oversee. And although our students are going to these charter schools, the school district of Pittsburgh still feels responsible for their education and for their success as students because those are still students in the city of Pittsburgh who at some point are going to impact our great city. 
So we, as a district, are responsible for making sure that the charter schools do what they're supposed to do and what they promise to do. Yeah, and so, you know, the, is there data that actually shows charter schools are getting better results for students than traditional public schools, or what is? Uh, not typically. Most charter schools are not outperforming district schools. Um, actually, most charter schools, many charter schools are underperforming a lot of schools in the district. There may be some who have uh, uh, higher test data than some of our schools, but typically, even across the nation, charter schools are not outperforming regular public schools. And so, you know, we hear a lot about charter school reform, particularly even at, in, within our state. What are some of the concerns with the current Pennsylvania charter school law? Like, and what should families, you know, be keeping an eye on as it relates to that? Well, generally speaking, we want to ensure that charter schools are held to the same standard as district uh, regular public schools. It's not fair if they're not held to the same level of accountability as public schools. So there are some things in the law that need to be clarified or expanded or even changed. I believe it was 2015 where the Auditor General did a review of our law um, in comparison to other charter laws across the nation and determined that we have the worst charter school law in the nation that has not changed basically since it was implemented in 1998. So there definitely need to be some changes when it comes to ensuring that charter schools are held accountable to the same level as public schools, as general public schools. Uh, but also, to, to be more specific, funding is one of those issues that really needs to have some reform. Since we are responsible for sending tuition to, to uh, charter schools, especially the special education funding, the special education funding per pupil subsidy is almost three times what it is for general education. However, charter schools are not educating the same students that the uh, Pittsburgh public schools are with the same level of disabilities. They don't have the same number of special education students, nor do they get the students that have the more extreme disabilities and have the greater need. However, they get the same special education funding no matter what level of disability. So that's something that needs to be changed. And cyber funding is another issue that I think is a, is, is a top priority and should be a top priority because cyber charter schools don't have nearly the operating operations costs that brick and mortar schools do. However, they receive the same funding from us that the brick and mortar charter schools receive. So cyber charter funding is a, a, should be a high priority. Yeah, this sounds like if you don't have, you know, the same overhead costs. Right. It seems like that would be something people need to take a look at. <laughs> exactly. For sure. Because it's pulling resources, yes. you know, from, from um, where it could be used. So where can families find, if they want information um, about the achievement results of, of charter schools? I know we could put our achievement results on our website with our schools, but where can they find if they want to you know, look at how charters are performing? So there is a charter page on our website um, that I try to keep as updated as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a charter, a, a web page manager, mm -hmm. but I do what I can. Mm -hmm. um, so that's somewhere you can go. I try to put as much information as possible because I have found that most of the charter schools don't put a lot of that rele relevant information um, on their page when it comes to their uh, achievement data or their budgets um, or special education data. So I make sure that we have that on our site so that parents so can be on the charter site, on the charter, on the charter page on our, on our website. website. Yeah. But also there's the Future Ready and index okay. site where uh, families can go and that's the state achieve, uh, assessment data site where they can go and find a lot of information on school achievement. That's great and um, so Lisa thanks so much for sitting down with us um, I thought this was really informative um, again it's just a conversation um, you and your team do a great service to the district and to school families by holding uh, charter schools accountable um, before you go, though, I'd like to learn a little bit more about how, you know, you, I think you said you've been with the district almost 14 years, right? So tell us a little bit about your journey in PPS and how you get, came to be the Director of Charter Accountability. Well, I actually hit 14 years on September 2nd, so that's like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I started as a uh, project manager in the 
an RAA, that's what it used to be called, Research Assessment and Accountability, yeah. which is now DREA, yeah. which is Data, Research, Evaluation, and Assessment. Um, so I started as a project manager, and then I became the research associate for charter schools. Then I became the director of assessment, who was also <laughs> in charge of charter schools. Um, and, and finally, it, it was realized, and I, I have to say I did put it out there as often as I could, that the charter school position needed to be its own position. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, a lot of oversight that needs to be provided, and we, we need to ensure that you know we have the time and the capacity to do that. So the district finally heard me and, <laughs> and created the position, um, the director of charter accountability. Um, and also uh, provided me with an SDSS for charter schools who oversees all the enrollment. Uh, Barbara McGee, who has been wonderful because she's been able to clean up the enrollments to ensure we're not overpaying because we pay enough. So we want to make sure that that's accurate and we want to make sure that you know, st students get transportation and, and anything they need. So, so Barbara and I are you know, doing what we can in charter schools. So I've been the director of charter accountability now um, I believe this is my fourth year in that role, but I've been in charge of charter schools uh, going on 13 years now. Yeah, so you have a rich history in, with charters and you know what oh, you're yeah. looking at and what you're <laughs> reviewing. And it's so great that we have people within the organization with um, knowledge like yours. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today. Thank you. All right, everyone, well, we'll be back um, with our uh, future in the future with another episode of We Are PPS. Bye.